Hello everyone, my name is Neural Sin, and welcome to a brand new series where I am covering the auto crafting dropper functionality as part of Nimbomb's carpet mod. Now some of you may be aware of this mod through technical projects such as Ilmango's peaceful server. However, I'm going to be taking a closer look at it here to show how it works, why it works, and then we are slowly going to build up to practical examples where we can construct and auto craft real things. The purpose of this video is not to replace the wonderful video that Numbomb himself actually published about the feature, where he does showcase various practical applications. Instead, the series is meant more as a guide through the world of auto crafting by way of the auto crafting dropper. So for the purposes of this series, I'm going to assume that you've already installed a fabric loader, as well as the carpet mod itself. To enable the auto crafting dropper, simply type slash carpet, Auto crafting dropper. True. Now the auto crafting dropper is based all around the crafting table itself. The crafting table contains a 3x3 crafting interface where you can insert ingredients for a crafting recipe and craft an item, in this case a block of iron. The dropper contains a similar interface, which is a 3x3 grid. However, when I populate that with the same items and power it, it simply drops out its item to me. The entire idea behind the auto crafting dropper is to put this with this so that when we open up the dropper interface and we populate it with a valid crafting recipe and then we power it, the desired item is actually crafted. And that is auto crafting in a nutshell. However, there's a lot more to it. And as we will see as we progress through this series, more creative solutions will be required in order to accomplish such a trivial task, particularly as the complexity of the recipes increases. Now, an important feature of a dropper pointed into a crafting table is the order in which it is filled. So, if I plop down a hopper into this dropper, and this dropper is pointing into this crafting table. And I chuck some items in to the hopper. You can see that the individual spots were populated sequentially until the dropper itself is full. If I were to do the same thing with a normal dropper, you can see that the items stack. That is a fundamental difference between the auto crafting dropper and a dropper on its own. And that will form the basis of how we construct more complicated recipes in the future. So let's try to auto craft the block of iron. We've already been using it in the previous examples where it's simply a three by three grid of iron ingots. We have a setup here where we can populate our dropper with iron ingots. They populate into the slots. And at this point we're left with the appropriate recipe for a block of iron. However, the entire point of auto crafting is that we do not have to manually craft this. Said another way, what I don't want to have to do is manually trigger that crafting recipe. Instead, what I'd like to do is automate the powering of the dropper. Now for this particular crafting recipe, we only want to trigger the dropper once it has been filled with iron ingots. So for that, we need to take one moment out and talk about comparators. Now comparators, as the name implies, compare signals. But one of the primary functions it serves is reading from a container. Now I have a data pack installed that shows me the signal strength of what it is reading and in this case, the container is a dropper. You can see that the signal strength is one. And this is, in fact, the recipe for a block of iron. However, if I put a crafting table in front of it, replicating the setup that we have over here, and do the same thing, you'll notice that it is now 15. So the combination of the dropper going into the crafting table 
does actually change the behavior of the comparator and subsequently the signal strength I mean, out of the comparator. One of the other things that we can look at, if we power a comparator from the back, the signal strength is 15. And now in compare mode, we run a signal in the side of a comparator. And the whole point is that the comparator is comparing the signal from the side to the signal coming in from the back. Now if the signal coming in from the back is less than the signal coming in from the side, no output is produced. And we can see that if we simply move this back. So the redstone torch produces a signal strength of 15 and adding a redstone dust here drops the signal strength to 14. You can see that our comparator output has dropped down to zero. And that's simply due to the fact that 14 is less than 15. If I were to remove this, you can see the comparator is correctly passing through the signal strength of 14. So on, off, on, off. And this is how we can determine if a container is full, or at least one of the ways that we can determine that a container is full. So you notice that the setup here is very similar to the setup here, meaning that if I point a comparator into the side and power it with a source that is going to produce a signal strength of 15, when the dropper is full, this comparator will pass through the signal 15. However, the second that I reduce the quantity of items within the dropper, the signal turns off. And that is because we have this combination here where, remove this for a second, you can see the signal strength is actually 13 because I've removed that iron ingot. If I put it back in, it's 15, 13, 11, 10, and so on. So a full container is 15. We can threshold that by providing an external power source of 15. And now we know that the dropper is full. When the dropper is full, what we want to be able to do is power this dropper here so that it crafts our block of iron. So let's move some things around a little bit here. So I have a setup here, which is the standard setup, where I have a dropper pointing into a crafting table. And so we're going to apply the principle of comparators that we just learned, where we will measure the output signal of the dropper. And when the dropper is full, the comparator will fire or turn on, powering this block, which will then depower this redstone torch. Simply due to the fact that we are trying to compare to signal strength of 15, one trick that we can do is actually take that signal strength from this and run it into the side of the comparator. And now what will happen is when the dropper fills up, the comparator will turn on, the redstone torch will depower, depowering this particular redstone line, the repeater will depower, and the threshold will be lowered, thus allowing the signal to flow through. The second, there's fewer items, nothing happened. However, once we fill the container, you can see what I'm talking about. This turns off, we no longer care about a threshold. And all we care about is trying to power this particular drop. So let's take that a step further. If we have a setup similar to this, what will happen is in this particular scenario, our dropper is full, so we want to craft something. The comparator is on, it is powering this block, which is depowering this torch, which is allowing this redstone torch to power this block, which we can put some redstone on, 
and wire it up to our dropper. And as you can see, it produced an item automatically. And simultaneously, our thresholding turned back on. So now if I were to add only a handful of items in here, you can see that the 15 threshold is still in place, meaning that the system itself is waiting for a full dropper. So let's see how this works out. We'll go ahead and throw in a hopper in there. We'll grab a barrel, some sort of container, and we'll populate it with some iron ingots. And immediately you can see as the iron ingots fill the dropper, the signal strength threshold of 15 is reached, and our torch tower inverts itself and then powers the dropper. And we're getting a whole bunch of iron blocks here, which if we want to just collect them up, we can put a hopper underneath the crafting table, which is another feature of the auto crafting dropper. If you put items in, once they are crafted, they're actually going to be coming out of the crafting table. And so in this case, you can see that every time something is crafted, it is going into our barrel simply because it is being sucked out of the crafting table and then pushed into the barrel. So while this is not the best design, it is certainly a simple one to illustrate some of the key concepts of auto crafting. In future episodes, we'll be expanding upon this idea to create additional and more complicated types of crafting recipes. One note is that this particular design here, again, while not optimal, but certainly functional, works on all sorts of block recipes, such as redstone blocks, which we can see as it fills up, crafts, and there's our redstone block. Similarly, it'll work with gold. And so on. So thank you for watching this first episode of this brand new series. Leave me a like and drop some comments down below on other things that you would like to see me cover as we get further into this auto crafting dropper series. I'm Neural Sin, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.